On August 20th, 2012, the American film magazine published an article with an unusual subtitle. New distribution company launches in the lead up to Toronto Film Festival looks to release eight to 10 films per year. To the question of journalists, why Hollywood needs another film studio and what makes this studio unique, founders humbly respond. We are planning distribution, financing, and production of films with special point of view. We are convinced that big changes are coming to the cinematography market. And the Oscar goes to everything, everywhere, all at once. On March 30th, 2023, the films of this studio won nine statuettes at the Oscars in all major categories, leaving eminent directors, big projects, and film companies far behind. The name of this studio is A24. In less than 11 years of its existence, A24 has gone from an unknown niche company to the main triumphant of the most important film award in the world. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone have a good night. Thank Everything, you everywhere, all at once. The Lobster, The Lighthouse, Midsommar, Lady Bird, Euphoria, Moonlight, Hereditary, The Whale, The Killing of a Sacred Deer. If your cinematic appetite is not limited to Disney fast food, then I'm willing to bet you have at least heard of these films. And the films that you saw with 100% probability were imprinted in your memory, leaving an indelible mark after watching. And I'm not necessarily talking about catharsis now. A24 films break any boundaries of what is acceptable in cinema. Wave riding on, farting corpse, no problem. Playful caresses with sausage fingers or turning into. Animal for lack of relationship, easy. Or Macbeth from Shakespeare's classic tragedy becomes dark-skinned. Or Scarlett Johansson eats people. Or Hindu in Scandinavian myths. Or a metaphor of generational change on the example of two distraught old men killing group of young people who came to the village to shoot films for adults. Creative, to say the least. Each film of the studio becomes a natural challenge for the viewer, but God forbid, decide that it all comes down to visual trash. This is just a dazzling top, bright cover if you wish. All the most important runs much deeper. For example, this frame from The Lighthouse refers the viewer to the legend of Prometheus, after which the film can be safely viewed differently reading in it allusions to ancient Greek mythology, and the hero can be viewed as an integral archetype of the savior. But these movie X references are just for the hardcore horror fans. If everything is clear here, Here's Johnny. then the yellow beetle is still Kubrick, but already combined with their dispute with Stephen King, when Kubrick deliberately changed the color of the car to separate himself from King's novel, and the license plate of the same car from the state Texas is a tribute to the benchmark horror, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. A24 films contain enormous number of references, but nevertheless, the main point here is different. Each A24 project carries a meaningful author's reflection. Even though this reflection would be created in Aesopian language, about which nerds will scratch their heads. And therein lies amazing phenomenon, confusing and strange, heaped up with metaphors, references and meanings. Films still arouse a terrible interest among viewers. Some creative solutions are just breaking the usual ideas of what cinema is capable of. And the viewer seeing this only goes more and more crazy. To understand how all of this began to receive awards, gained millions of loyal fans around the world and went to the forefront of Hollywood, we have to find out what this modern Hollywood is like on its own. In fact, there has already been a similar precedent in the history of cinema. It comes to the studio of the now-hated Harvey Weinstein, Miramax. It was positioned as an independent small company producing non-commercial auteur films. From under her wing came Tarantino, The Scream franchise, Good Willy Hunting, Oscar-winning Chicago, and Shakespeare in Love, Amelie, Gangs of New York. This listing could go on and on, but as you know, everything was ruined by greed. The company was sold to Disney and withered under its auspices. In general, a certain golden formula was formed in the 90s, thanks to which the films were very popular among a wide audience. 
but at the same time had a strong author's identity. It is no coincidence that the IMDb Top 250 is occupied by films shot in the 90s. And to understand why, you just need to look at the list of the highest grossing films for any of those years. For example, 1993. Note that there is not a single franchise in the top, but there are two whole Spielberg films, one of which collected a bunch of Oscars. And there is also an outstanding comedy by Chris Columbus, director of Home Alone and The First Two Potters, and a thriller by Sidney Pollack, who worked with Kubrick and Woody Allen. It's hard to imagine something like that now, isn't it? If it seemed to you that this is just a coincidence, then we can look at the next year list. The first two lines are The Lion King and Forrest Gump, period. Over the years, the top grossing films list have included Titanic, Aladdin, The Matrix, American Beauty, Gladiator, Toy Story, The Sixth Sense, The Silence of the Lambs, Home Alone, and The Ghost. These films are now considered reference, but these are difficult motion pictures to produce. The personality of the author is extremely important in them, but for studios, every such prominent film is first and foremost big risk. The authority of the screenwriter or director does not guarantee that the film will become commercially successful. But since there was no choice, and the idea of franchises was only born in narrow circles, at that time, studio requirements allowed authors to conduct creative experiments until 2000, only seven film series had earned more than $1 billion in box office receipts. Since the beginning of the century, its number has increased to 50. This happened due to the development of the franchise format in Hollywood. A franchise is a series of films based on a unified, recognizable brand. The concept, in which the audience is already familiar with some of the picture details, allows you to pre-calculate the number of tickets that will be sold. The Marvel Cinematic Universe is considered the most successful. Inside it intersects many heroes belonging to Marvel Comics, MCU. It is also the highest grossing film franchise ever. Its box office receipts exceed $28 billion. Can such a system be called successful? Well, from a commercial point of view, yes. But in terms of creativity, obviously, not everything is so smooth. In the 90s, the probability that the viewer who came to the cinema will get to the continuation of the film was 10% in 2023. 80. The desire of studios, like any business, to secure their budget and increase income is understandable. The franchise method has proven to work and has taken over the big screen since the early 10s. But the audience, which expects something more from films than entertainment, left the cinemas. With the advent of franchises, the film industry fell into a permanent state of endless self-repetition, which radically divided the film market. Today we have two options. Either the film will be super commercially successful and all the story arcs can be predicted from the trailer or it will be an art film with a deep meaning and most likely a commercial failure. Let's face it, festival cinema is the lot of cinephiles. The average viewer will simply never stumble upon and see the small three-hour movies. Exceptions that manage to balance between the demands of the market and the desire to plant some seeds of cogitation in the viewer can be counted on one hand. The big screen has gained a large volume and lost in narrativity, in the ability to send a message, to generate meanings, no matter how regrettable it may sound. Cinema has ceased to be a one-tenth of what it was for our grandparents, moms and dads. Technology and the growing market have changed the way the spectacle is consumed. TV and the internet have taken some of the functions from the cinema. It would never occur to anyone to make The Godfather for the big screen now. Studios began to give preference to films designed for teenagers, the most active audience of cinema. In order for the head of the studio to allow spending 100 million on production, he had to be sure that the film is aimed at the wide possible audience. In other words, that it will be made simply, accessibly, and effective. Thus, a large array of genres and viewers interested in them were left out of Hollywood. However, the directors who turned out to be not needed by Big Hollywood did not repeat the fate of the dinosaurs, but quietly moved to another plane in serials. Now many popular genres, dramas, detective stories, political and spy thrillers, historical films, not finding their audience in the cinema, go to streaming and become series, where big studios spend 200 million on the production of one blockbuster to make it extremely versatile for all ages, social and ethnic groups. Streaming goes in reverse and divides this budget into several small projects, each of which will be focused on a separate group of people. 
This is a fundamentally different approach. A studio product tends to be universal, while a streaming product, on the contrary, strives to create a separate series for each unique viewer. Such a policy reduces risks and increases the potential number of people interested in the content. This allows streaming to sponsor the work of various directors, It seems that cinema has finally divided into three niches, where each has taken its place, cinemas, festivals, and streaming. But like a stone in a shoe, the A24 studio appeared. A24 alone decided to change the hierarchy and knock Hollywood that had captured cinemas out of the perch. It aims to return to cinemas those who are disappointed in them and refine the taste of those who still continue to go to. A24 was founded by industry veterans Daniel Katz, David Fenkel, and John Hodges, who previously worked as producers at major studios. The name A24 was inspired by the Italian motorway A24 that Katz was driving on when he decided to start the company. Coincidentally, the motorway is also famous in the history of Italian cinema as a setting in the films of the masters of the neorealist style. The company began distributing films in 2013. Almost never, let's be honest, a whole studio been the guarantor of a movie to be good before the appearance of 24. Until 2016, the company was only engaged in the distribution of films, however. Potentially, it always wanted to sponsor directors itself. That year, on the 2nd of September, The Moonlight, the first film entirely funded by the studio, was released worldwide. February 27th, 2017, Moonlight snatches the Oscar for Best Picture from La La Land. The very first film of its own production becomes a real triumph for the studio. For the next five years, A24 experimented with genres, bringing in well-known actors, and even flirting with the general public. But all this was just a preparation for the main project, everything everywhere all at once. <laughs> The first author's blockbuster, which was planned as punch to the gut to all giant companies that are afraid to invest in experimental big cinema. The release date of the film was a joke itself. Exactly one month after release, the most anticipated project of the MCU, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. A24 wanted to beat the main blockbuster corporation, Disney Studios, on its own field, in its own genre, with a film made on the same theme. And A24 blew Disney out of the water. The film earned over 100 million at the box office. Money unthinkable for independent cinema. After everything, everywhere, all at once, Strange was perceived empty, unemotional, stingy, not only with plot twists and characters, but also with images of the multiverse. As the final nail in the coffin for superheroics, everything, everywhere, all at once, won seven Oscars, including the most important. While Doctor Strange was viewed as one of the least popular or lowest rated entries in the MCU. After that, A24 authority was recognized all over the world. And there's only one question in my head, How's that even possible? A24 stands on two unique principles. First one, directors should have complete freedom that was previously unthinkable in Hollywood. And yes, if you thought that they were free and that the directors were curating films in Hollywood, then, with the rarest exception, you are mistaken. In industrial cinema operates only an American model, the central paradigm of which is, at the head of any film, whether it be a television series or an Oscar-winning painting, is a producer. So, the first is the absolute freedom of directors, and the second is rejection of the traditional marketing form from the way regular movies are advertised. A24 focused on viral content and word of mouth. First, it's cheaper to draw attention to your films. Secondly, it is also a manifestation of creative freedom. From this non-standard solution to create a movie poster, remaking Da Vinci's Last Supper, the studio began its journey into the world of crazy advertising projects. They just put the gangster James Franco in the place of Jesus, and that's it. Then the defenders of religion did their job and spread the hype about an immoral film. In fact, A24 perfectly knows the rules of the game adopted in the industry and skillfully juggles them. The studio has created a cult around itself, a cult built on the prestigious pleasure of feeling like you're part of something not for everyone. A24 turned the main disadvantage of festival cinema into the main locomotive of interest in it. Have you noticed how uniform movie posters are? If not, look at this, this, and this. 
In Hollywood, there is an unspoken set of rules about how a movie poster of a particular genre should look. Comedy, action, Christmas, crime, rom-com, thriller. On the 10th poster, it starts to look like you've definitely seen it before. But what does A24 do? For example, the same X. The poster shows cute legs. It intuitively hints at the comedy genre, but there are several nuances. The color of the poster is blood red, the feet are dirty, and the text on the poster reads, dying to show you a good time. I'm totally imbued with romance. And in general, just look at how these posters contrast with the pictures we are used to. Colors, minimalism, drawing, images, crystal creativity. The most unusual A24 commercial was made for the advertisement of the movie Ex Machina. I'm sure you may have heard of this PR campaign. The studio made the Tinderbot one of the main characters, and everything would be fine. But in the film, she is just an artificial intelligence with the face of actress Alicia Vikander. Having made such a bot, the studio released it on the internet. Users of the dating app were stumbling upon her while swiping and lots of them mistook her for a real girl. A week after the launch, the largest American newspapers wrote about the bot and discussions regarding the ethics of such advertising broke out on the internet. Tinder scolded A24 for such a trick and banned the bot, which attracted even more attention. From a marketing standpoint, it was a massive success. For the midsummer promotion, they made an ad based on spooky children's toy called Bear in the Cage. The video is colored in soft light colors. Children are cheerfully playing with a caged bear, but the video still intrigues with questions. What kind of bear is this and why is it in a cage? Many people wrote in the comments section that despite the absence of any hints of horror, the atmosphere of commercial makes them feel very uncomfortable. The film amplifies this feeling many times over. By the way, for a long time, you could really buy a bear on the official website of the studio, like many other accessories that the studio created as part of the promotional campaign for their films. For example, for Everything Everywhere All at Once, A24 released three rather strange items. Hot dog finger gloves, legendary pet rock, and actually, it's just a candle. The best attribute of the studio, in my opinion, is this razor set for the movie The Lighthouse. It consists of beard oil and soap in the form of a mermaid figurine that Robert Pattinson's character finds in his mattress. For the mid-90s, they made skateboards. For the The Green Knight, a whole role-playing game and a disc with the text of the original poem. For Rapture, VHS with a film on a celluloid. For Hereditary, a calendar with evil grannies and a set for making a gingerbread treehouse from the finale. In addition, you can buy scented candles with flavors from nine movie genres and a soap made in the colors of the TV test card. Such an unusual approach to promoting films with a small budget and cutting edge ideas have become important components of the A24 and created its unique image. The studio's creators started looking for films and figuring out how to promote them rather than figuring out films that would be easy to promote. A24 has become an island of freedom in the ocean of industry, which has opened up many talented directors for us. For the studio, a method of work aimed only at obtaining financial benefits is unacceptable because A24 is not interested in films that live one weekend even if they earn some money. Their forte is a long-term business strategy in which the company creates the conditions for the emergence of strong paintings with the longest possible shelf life. And contrary to Hollywood logic, the more money a studio spends on its films, the more daring, more extraordinary, and more exceptional they become. Strictly speaking, the main genre of the studio to this day remains horror, A24 calling card. Probably it is difficult to find a more rigid genre all the actions of which are reduced to tension, blunt characters, screamers, and desire to frighten the viewer. But now obviously it was the best decision. Apart from blockbusters, horror is the only genre for which the audience still goes to the movies. Only horrors, being radically different from stereotyped popcorn movies, were able to keep the viewer in front of big screens without spending a multi-million dollar budgets. Noticing this and seeing horror being approached by such prominent auteur filmmakers as Stanley Kubrick, Michael Haneke, and Lars von Trier, A24 decided trying to combine thrilling suspense with people's love for horror films and started talking on serious topics. This is how Ari Aster appeared. 
His Midsommar and Hereditary do not use darkness and screamers in their arsenal, but slowly reflect on the loss of loved ones, depression, abusive relationship and loneliness. We are not afraid of a monster drawn with the help of graphics, but are of the one that an ordinary human can become as a result of mental traumas. Don't you swear at me, you little shit! Don't you ever raise your voice at me! I am your mother! Directors of A24 actively interact with the occult, metaphysical, and mystical themes, but never define this context as a decisive factor in the development of the story. The viewer of horror is accustomed to seeing some terrible evil entity that does not belong to the material world as the cause of negative actions. Leaving the cinema, he leaves the conventional film reality and feels safe. But this does not happen after watching A24 films. After the A24 movies, you always know that the danger follows you step by step. This idea is especially vivid in the film The Lighthouse by Robert Eggers, where two sailors are trapped on the island and are slowly going crazy. The film is devoid of antagonists and screamers. In front of us are two drunken men whose subconscious gets out more and more every day, which frightens the viewer. In retrospect, the revolution started by A24, which at first glance seems unprecedented is actually not. A similar thing happened in American cinema in the mid-60s, when the mainstream of the time, historical peplums and westerns, bored audiences as much as today's audiences bored with endless and monotonous superhero blockbusters. And the industry's reaction to this was, in fact, the independent cinema. Films by Roman Polanski, Stanley Kubrick, Francis Ford Coppola, Martin Scorsese, Robert Altman, Woody Allen, and many others. The industry has enlisted the help of creators to push cinema forward and breathe new life into it. A24 is the clearest example of the unpredictable and unique way that cinema makes. The works of the studio are an important and indicative point. At the moment when it seems that the author's cinema is no longer interesting to anyone, A24 time after time proves the opposite to the whole world. Thanks to this work that aroused people's interest in unusual cinema, another studio named Neon came to light. And all you need to know about it is that for four years in a row, the studio has been advertising and distributing films that subsequently received the Palme d'Or at Cannes, the most important and most honorable film award in the world. It was Neon who opened for us Parasites, Triangle of Sadness, Tanya, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, The Worst Person in the World, and Titan. The creation of a film requires new tools because the old ones sooner or later become unusable and do not meet the challenge of the time. The artist's point of view changes, shifts, thus causing a variety of images and styles. It is the authors who move the cinema forward, and the industry is obliged to give them a platform for creativity. First and foremost, this is essential for the industry itself. A24 set as its goal to search, study, and transform the reality around us. The zeitgeist has long ceased to be reflected in recognizable today's types and images. It is no longer in superheroics, although not so long ago it was. It erupts into new forms and signs, tries himself in strange and unusual images. Only a constant, fearless search for the new language and style can become a mirror of the real world and move the cinema, and along with it, the viewer forward.